Good morning, church. Glory be unto God. Can, can we give him some praise this morning? Can we say hallelujah to his name? Hallelujah. 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 We give him the highest praise. For he's been good to us. Son wasn't able to make it this morning, but because of his grace and his mercy, we here this morning. Amen. If you're able, would you please stand in reverence to the reading of God's mighty word. This morning's scripture will be coming from 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 through 34. And it reads, For I have received of the Lord, that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night, in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner, also he took the cup, when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye, as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord death till he come. Wherefore, whoever should eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily should be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinks unworthily, eateth and drink, drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if we should judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. Wherefore, my brethren, when ye come together to eat, tarry one for another. And if a man hunger, let him eat at home, that ye come not together unto condemnation, and the rest do I set in order when I come. May the Lord have a blessing for the readers, the hearers, and doers of his mighty word. Please join me in a word of prayer. Father God, we come once again before your throne of grace, Father. Ask for forgiveness for anything that we may have done, said, or thought that wasn't pleasing to you, Father. Father, we come right now, thanking you for this day, a day that wasn't promised, Father, but you saw fit to give it to us anyway, Father. Father, we come right now, asking your blessings upon those who stand in the need of a blessing this morning, Father. Bless those that's in hospital beds this morning, Father. Bless those that are behind prison walls this morning, Father. Bless them like only you know how, Father. Father, we come right now, lifting this service up to you, Father, that you may bless it to be what you would have it to be, Father. Father, we come right now, welcoming, welcoming in the Holy Spirit right now, Father, to rule and super rule over this service this morning, Father. Father, we want to continue to lift the pastor up to you, Father. Continue to lay him down in the deep treasures of your word, Father. Give him a word from on high this morning, Father, that someone may come asking, what must they do to be saved, Father? These and all prayers we pray in your God and Son of Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to take you back a little bit this morning, and it's an old song. I need you to help us out, clap your hands, sing along. It's, um, and the, the song says, since I laid my burdens down, yes. I feel better. So much better. So much better. Yes. Because, you know, you, we always take them to the Lord. 
and then we leave them there. And two minutes later, we back there getting them. You know, God, I, you can't do it. I can do it. I take it back. I'm going to work on it a little while. And then after a little while, I said, well, I can't handle it. I'm going to give it back to God. Right back. <laughs> two minutes later, I've got it back again. Yeah. But when you lay it down and yeah. you leave it there, leave it there. Don't go back and pick it up. Because you can't do nothing with nothing. it no how. That's what we're gonna be singing about. Amen. Glory, glory. glory, glory. Hallelujah. Yeah. Since I laid my oh, burdens down. down. Yes. Thank you, Lord.
Can't nobody do it but Jesus. You know that? Hallelujah. 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 Well, we're in December. We're going to start celebrating Christmas early. Because, see, Jesus died. He came and he died for us. Yes, he did. It may be Xmas for some of them other folks. But for me, and I pray for all of you, it's Christmas. Christmas. You Amen. can't take Christ out of Christmas. All right. Lord, have mercy. Amen. So we're going to sing, Come, Let Us Adore Him. We're going to start out December adoring Jesus yes. for what yes. he did. And he came. Oh, yeah. he, he loved us so much yes, yes, that yes. he came. Yes, he did. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Worship. Nobody but him is worth. 
Good morning, POC. Good morning. I'm still Tamika Ward, <laughs> and I'm on behalf of Pastors Aid Ministry. I'm just here as a reminder. This is our, at the end of our fundraiser for our African American Expressions Christmas fundraiser. The next order date, I will put in orders all this week through December the 12th. So if you would like to order some, please see me after church. Uh, we are taking payments by Zelle, cash, or check. So please see me in the vestibule. Thank you. Oh, and for the ones of you who did order um, last week, I have your orders after church. Good morning, church. Aren't we grateful and thankful for the blood? The blood that Jesus shed for us. Thank you, Lord. Let's to lift him up and worship him this morning. Hallelujah. You all help me sing and worship this morning.
Something about the blood of Jesus. Amen. 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 What a testimony. Good morning, church. I thank God for his goodness, and I'm appreciative of the presence of each and every one of you. What day is this? This is the day. And I'll let Disturb my peace of mind. Why? He will keep you whose mind is stayed on him. Why? Because you trust in him. Trust in the Lord forever. For in the Lord Jehovah, everlasting strength. Amen. 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 This is the day. 
a day like no other. Amen. Amen. I thank God for his goodness and the appreciative presence of each and every one of you. Amen. Amen. This is the last first Sunday of this year. Amen. Of this year. Think about it. Somebody wasn't here that is not here this morning that was here last year of the last first Sunday. And there are some that was here the first Sunday of this year. They're not here this last first Sunday. But I tell you, it's nothing but God's grace and his mercy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Let the visitors in. Let those in. Amen. Bodies, come on in. Amen. Amen. If we have any uh, visitors here this morning, first-time visitors, I welcome you. I thank you for your presence. Amen. Your presence is a present to us, and we thank you. Amen. That you could have went anywhere this morning, but God led you here, and we give him glory and we give him all of the praise. Amen? Amen. Anybody bring your Bibles this morning? The three of y'all. Or your app, or pad, or phone. Amen? Amen. You're going to need it this morning. <laughs> I done messed up again. <laughs> Amen. We'll be coming from a familiar passage of scripture, amen, from 1 Corinthians, the 11th chapter, amen, and uh, I apologize, I only sent one verse to go on the screen, the, then the Holy Spirit pulled my coattail and said, now you need to read all of this, you need to read all of this, amen, so we're coming from 1 Corinthians, the 11th chapter, starting at the 23rd verse, amen, Amen. Since I'm going to be accountable for my actions, amen, I'm going to read all of the verses this morning. Amen. And whatever version you may have, just silently walk along with me. I'll be reading from the King James Version this morning. Amen. It won't be on the screen, so that's why it's good to bring your Bible. Bring your Bible. You never, <laughs> you never know. Amen. First Corinthians, the eleventh chapter, starting at the twenty-third verse. If you would please stand for the reading of God's word, if you can. Amen. Amen. God bless. Hallelujah. I'll be reading the text this morning. First, starting at First Corinthians. The 11th chapter, starting at the 23rd verse, and it reads, For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he brake it and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup. When he had supped, saying, This cup is a new testament in my blood. This do ye as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Now listen, for as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself. And so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning 
the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. I'd just like to tag this text with your prayers, but above all, with God's presence. Examine how you know. <laughs> You got it. What, what did you say, sister? What? Examine. Examine. Examine the pastor. No. Examine the deacons. E examine the ushers. Okay, yeah. Preacher, pastor, amen. Examine yourself. You may be seated. Amen. Amen. Y'all going to remember that title. Huh? Hallelujah. Amen. Father God, we come in the precious name of Jesus. We thank you. We glorify you, Lord. You have been good to us. Better than we've been to ourselves. Lord, when we look back at this past year, it is you that has enabled us to come together as your body and assembled ourselves, Lord, to in remembrance of you, Jesus, for what you've done on Calvary's cross. Your body, your blood that was shed for us, how you gave up the ghost. No one could take your life. You died, but early third day Sunday morning, you got up with power in your hand. We thank you, Lord, for another opportunity to come to praise and worship you. And Lord, we just want to say thank you for another day's journey. Thank you for touching us with a finger of love opened up our eyes to a day that was not promised to us, gave us a reasonable portion of health and strength. We thank you, Lord, that we are here because somebody wanted to be here this morning. But it's just your grace, Lord, that you made a way for us. We thank you, Jehovah Jireh, that you are our provider. You have been so good to us, Lord, better than we've been to ourselves. So you allowed us to come and worship you in spirit and in truth, Lord. We're praying for those that are in the sick room, convalescing, those in the hospital rooms this morning. We thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are omnipresent in our lives. Touch right now in the name of Jesus. We're praying for those behind prison bars. We're praying for those, Lord, that are living outdoors, the unhoused, Lord. Don't have a place to lay their heads. But I pray, Lord, that they would not look at their place, but they would acknowledge your presence in their lives, Lord. Pray for every household represented here this morning, Lord. Thank you that you are God that don't look on the outside, but you look at our hearts. And you said you will supply our every needs according to your riches and your glory. Now it's me, it's me, it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. And may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord. You are my strength, and you are my redeemer. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Examine yourself. What identifies us as Christians? What identifies us as believers in Jesus Christ? 
What identifies us as born again believers? Now, many people may say, well, you know, I come to church. I pay my tithes. I give my offering. I read my Bible. I, I pray. But the question is this, what identifies us as born again believers? Listen to me, church. The only thing that Jesus created and commanded that identifies our faith in him, our connection to him, the only thing that we practice that prove we are disciples of Christ is the breaking of bread and sharing of the cup. This is what unites us and identifies us, that we have a Savior that sacrificed his life on Calvary's cross. He shed his precious blood, and by his death, we are redeemed from the hand of the enemy. Jesus only gave the Baptist church two ordinances. Baptism. And the Lord's Supper. Just two. And that is what identifies us. He said for us to be baptized. It's that is our identity. That when we go into the water, it is an outward show of an inward manifestation. We go down in the water, we come up anew, born again. And partaking of the Lord's Supper. Examine yourself. In Scripture, Jesus said, This do, that's his commandment, this do in remembrance of me. The common practice we share that indicates that we are born-again believers, that we are Christians, that we are believers in Jesus Christ is the sharing of bread and the cup. It's two things. A lot of people read their Bible. Some people pray four or five times a day. To come to church. It is the breaking of bread and the cup. It is the apostle Paul that is writing to the church in Corinth, and he teaches us that what we are to do when we come to this table. Eat of this bread and drink of this cup. As Christians, we are in relationship with Jesus Christ. Relationship. Whenever you believe that Jesus died on the cross for your sin and that God has raised Jesus from the dead and you have given him your faith, you are actually in relationship with Jesus. Because the Bible said that we are the bride of Christ. And Jesus is the bridegroom. That is relationship. And as the bride of Christ, we need to understand what this marital relationship is all about. Marital Relationship. In the 21st century, most new marriages, 60% of them will end in divorce. 30% of Christian marriages will end in divorce. Most people get a divorce within the first four years of their marriage. One of the main reasons is because of expectations and communication. Expectations and communications. 
why expectations are not met and needs are not met. But we have to understand that sometimes our expectations are unrealistic. Because somehow we have not figured out that men and women are different. We're different emotionally and psychologically. But sometimes expectations are unrealistic because of what? A lack of communication. In part, We have not yet learned to express what we need from each other. You know, and sometimes we can verbalize it. But I've got to the point, amen, you need to write it down. Can I get an amen? Amen. Sometimes we think the person should automatically know what we need or what we expect. Like like you have ESP or, or that somebody can read your mind. Or, or look, no, you love me, so you ought to know what I want. I mean, look up here. Get an amen up in here. The only way they're going to know, you have to tell them. Communication. That's why being in a relationship with Jesus, he does not expect us to guess what he wants from us. Jesus tells us what he wants. When he was in the upper room with his disciples, he verbalized and told them what he wants. So it wasn't enough verbally. He <laughs> Jesus said, I want you to do this. Yes, we come to church. Yes, we pay our tithes, some of us. Yes, we give an offering. And yes, we do a lot of good things. But the issue is we still have to do this. Jesus expects us to come to the table with him. Here's an invitation to come to the table with him. And you don't have to worry about the meal. You don't have to worry about the menu. Jesus is saying, I've taken care of all of that. I just need you to show up. Examine yourself. Now, I don't want no trouble, but look back this past year. Jesus said, I just need you to show up. Not when you feel like it. I need you to show up and eat and drink what I have prepared for you. And this is what's on the menu. Come to the table. And there's bread. The bread speaks of nutrition. And then there's the fruit of the vine. And that speaks of his blood. Jesus said, I need you to do this. Come to the table. Amen. Take of this bread. Eat it. Internalize it. The bread is my body. Now, understand, Jesus obviously was not speaking literally, but he wants us to get him on the inside of us. It's not enough just to come to church. It's not enough just to carry your Bible. It's not enough just to carry a cross. Those are symbols. They are important, but they are not enough. Jesus wants us to get him on the inside. We need the bread because that is nutrition. That is substance. 
When we partake, the bread is first. Now some folks just do it any kind of way. The bread is first because that is what strengthens us. Jesus said the bread, that's me. The bread is what symbolizes Jesus. And I, I don't want no trouble this morning by I ask you a question. What symbolizes you? Is it your car? Your clothes? Is it your money? Is it your house? Is it your position? Is it your title that symbolizes you? Jesus said, the bread is what symbolizes me. Jesus says, I I'm not money that can run out. I'm not like a car that will wear down. He said, I'm not like a house that can be destroyed. He said, I am the bread that can get inside of you and that can give you strength substance that you will need to deal with life. Do this. In Matthew 26, 28, he says, for this is my blood of the New Testament that is shed for the many of the remission of sin. The other thing that is on the table is the fruit of the vine. His blood. Hebrews 9.22 says, without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sin. In Leviticus 17.14 says, life of all flesh is in the blood. Jesus, therefore, did not simply have to die, but he had to shed his own precious blood. Oh, how precious is the blood of Jesus. It is the shedding of Jesus' blood that made an atonement for sin of all mankind. The shedding of his blood. For Gentiles and Jews place all their trust in the Lord Jesus in his blood. Matthew 26, 26, and he said as they were eating, Jesus, he took bread, he blessed it, and he broke it, and he gave to the, his disciples and said, take, eat. This is my body. And after he had blessed it and he break it, Jesus said, come to the table. This is my blood. Now listen here. Jesus said, come to the table. Anybody can come to the table. Anybody can come to the table. And see, some people, they may say, well, you know, I'm not worthy to come to the table. Some say that I don't come to the table because of my lifestyle. Some maybe say I don't come to the table because of my habits. Some say I don't come to the table because I don't deserve to be here, but you don't know my Jesus. You don't know my Jesus. Jesus has so much mercy that his mercy endures forever. Jesus has so much grace that there are so many people that don't deserve it, but he will allow anyone, anybody, come to the table. Why? Why? Why come to the table? Because there is forgiveness. Oh, Mercy. There is forgiveness at the table. I don't care what you've done. I don't care where you've been. I don't care the mistakes that you have made. There is the forgiveness at the table. You need to do this. You need 
need to do this. How do I know? How do I know? Because he allowed me at the table. I could be transparent. He allowed me at the table because there are some things that I have done. I've made some mistakes in my life. Amen. I've been some places. I entertained some thought. I've been hanging around folks that was not right in his sight. No, I am not perfect, but Jesus prepared a table. We have to understand there is an importance in taking the Lord's Supper. Can I, can I park there for a minute? I said, there is forgiveness at the Lord's table. Judas had an opportunity to take. Judas had an opportunity for forgiveness but he did not partake. Study John, the 13th chapter. There is forgiveness. Some people, some people have never come to the Lord's Supper. I understand that just some people just won't do this. But they need to know to come and to participate in the Lord's Supper. We need to know the importance of participating in the Lord's Supper. Do this in remembrance of me. Because every time we come to the table, where is your mindset? Every time you come to the table, what are you thinking about? Your mind should be on remembering his death, his burial, and his resurrection. Some of us have spiritual amnesia, and we seem to have forgotten where we came from. We have seen that we have forgotten who God is. The relationship that we have Jesus is not because of what we do for him. It's because of what he did for us. How could you forget that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord? Jesus Christ, our Lord, we put our faith in what Jesus did for us. Matthew 26, 28, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sin. That means remission means the forgiveness of sin. Jesus said, I, I, I want you to come to the table because I want you to know that I have forgiven you of your past sin, of your present sin, and of your future sin. All of your sin. There's so much power in the blood of Jesus that he forgives you of past, present, and future sin. Jesus forgives you and I, and he did it all because of his blood. Not a candy cane. His blood, his body. But see, we don't get excited about preaching about the blood. 
We don't hear a whole lot of sermons, teaching, and songs about the blood of Jesus. We have preachers now that don't want to preach about the blood. We don't hear about the blood. We don't, but we'll hear about promotions. We, we hear about positions. We hear about prosperity. Preach on healing. Preach about money. And yes, God will prosper you. But when you get in your car, in your house, and your money, you still are going to need his blood. You're going to need his blood. We need to get back to talking about his blood. We need to get back. Yeah, I'm old school. I'm old foggy, all that. But I love the hymns about the blood of Jesus. Oh, what can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood. What can make me whole again? I said nothing but the blood. Oh, how precious is that flow. It makes me whiter than snow. No other hope I know. Nothing but the blood. Oh, I feel it. I got to go. There is a fountain filled with blood. It's drawn from Emmanuel's vein and sinners plunge beneath that flood and loose All their guilt and saying, it reaches to the highest mountain. It flows to the lowest valley. The blood that gives me strength from day to day to day to day to day to day. It will never, it will never lose its power. The time when preachers would close out and they would talk about the death of Jesus and how he went to Calvary, how he hung there from the sixth to the ninth hour, how he hung there until the sun refused to shine. It's hung there until the moon dripped with blood and he died until the saints walked the streets of Jerusalem. He died that we might live but early, early, early third day Sunday morning, Jesus got up with all power, heaven and earth, in his hand. Do this! Do this. Remember it to me. Did he save you? Do this. Did he raise you? Do this. Did he give you another chance? Do this. If you believe that Jesus died on the cross of your sin and he saved you. As often as you do this, do this in remembrance of me. What identifies us as Christians? What identifies us as born again believers? It says in the text in verse 26, as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show your identification, your identity is when you show the world of his death, burial, and resurrection. That is our identity until the Lord comes. That's our identity. That's what identifies us. Show the world the Lord's death. He died for me. But you know what? He's coming back. He died, but he is alive. He died just 
for me. Just for me. I got to make it personal. Jesus went to Calvary just for me. He shed his precious blood just for me. Do this in remembrance of me. As often as you do it. Some do it once a month. Some do it every week. If we had the Lord's Supper out next week, folks go, what, 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 we, what? Is it first Sunday? What? As often as you do it, you are showing your identity. His death. But he is alive. And he's coming back again. He's coming back again. He's coming back again. If you believe, if you believe that Jesus died on the cross for your sins, he will save you. If you believe, if you trust of what Jesus did on Calvary's cross, he will save you. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, and if you believe that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. There is an invitation to come to the table. But first you must receive him into your life. Is there someone here this morning? Have you received Lord Jesus in your life? Have you confessed? Do you believe Jesus died on the cross for your sin? He will save you. It's not what you do. It's what he already did. But he's already dead. He's waiting there for you. As we said earlier, there was some that was here last year, the last first Sunday of the year. There was some that was here the first Lord's Supper of the year. How do you know that you're going to be here next year for the Lord's Supper. You don't know. This is the day. Choose you this day who you will serve. Will it be God or will it be man? The door of the church is open. The door of the church is the one that one say, I, I want to be saved. I, I want to be saved. It's not about your habits. It's not about whatever it is you have done. There is forgiveness at the table. Is there one this morning? I want to be saved. I want to be made whole. Come right now. Come right now. He will receive you. He will make you whole. He will forgive you. He will wash you. He will cleanse you. Come right now. Let me one be saying, well, I'm I'm saved. Well, have you been baptized? What is our identity? Baptism? And the Lord's Supper. As disciples, we are followers of Jesus Christ. As he was baptized, so we should be baptized. 
Jesus only gave two ordinances to the church. Baptism and the Lord's Supper. Have you been baptized? Say, I'm saved, but have you been baptized? Let, let me help you. Partial obedience equals to total disobedience. Come right now. You want to be baptized. We'll baptize you here. Come right now. Come. I want to be saved. I want to be baptized. Or you may be saying, well, I'm saved. I've been baptized. But do you have a church home? The church is under attack. All that we believe in is under attack. You need to be in the, on the covering, in the covering of a pastor. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves. That we come to encourage one another, to exhort one another, to pray for one another. Be there for one another. A part of this local assembly. Do you have a church home? I invite you to people of Christ, Missionary Baptist Church. But understand that we're not a perfect church. If you're looking for a perfect church, and if you happen to find it, don't join. Because you're going to mess it up. Real talk. Yeah, you're going to mess it up. But come on here. We're not a perfect church because I'm not a perfect pastor. But we do serve a perfect God. And you are welcome here. You are welcome in this place. You may be online and you can reach us at area code 209-833-7258. Amen? Amen. Amen. Now it is time that we will come to the table and partake of the Lord's Supper. Has anyone been omitted? Before anyone been omitted, has everyone been served? If you are to partake, and I will say this if you are not in the right relationship with Jesus Christ, don't take it, it will harm you. you don't, don't worry about what your neighbor got to say, but you need to get right with God, examine. Oh, y'all forgot already? <laughs> Examine yourself. If you ain't right, get right. Like, because I like the old hymn and say, get right with God and do it now. Get right with God. He will show you how down at the cross where he shed his blood. Get, get right, get right.
same manner he also took the cup. When he had supped, saying, This cup is a new testament in my blood. This do ye as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man, a woman, examine themselves. And so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh damnation, eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many of you are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. Weak and sickly. You may say, well, I'm strong. I eat up all the oatmeal. I drink wheat grass. Do all the push-ups. But spiritually, you toe up. And I'm going to say it, it's not so much what you say. not so much what you say it's what you do mm -hmm. say I believe but do your habits break back up what you believe and if they don't examine yourself Examine yourself. Just take a little moment and, and don't examine me. Or your neighbor. Look at you, look at yourself. Let's take a minute. Let's examine ourselves. And if you ain't right, get right. You got issues with your neighbor with your brother and the sisters, you need to get that right. Or don't, don't partake. Take a, examine ourselves. Have a little talk with the master. Thursday night in the upper room, Jesus with his disciples said, this is my body that is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. May we all eat together. After that same manner, he, he took the cup. This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And may we all drink together. And after that manner,
witness after, amen, the benediction. I will ask all those uh, in leadership that uh, we will go upstairs for uh, live scan, amen. Amen, we know that the, uh, the choir is having rehearsal today, amen. Amen, the children, youth are having practice today. We got a lot going on, amen. Amen, in limited space, but we gonna make it work. We gonna make it work, amen. And I thank each of you, amen, for taking the time out, going through the process, amen. Uh, the AB 506, amen, hey, that is what the uh, law is requiring of us, amen, and we're going to be obedient, amen, but I thank each and every one of you, amen. So, if we stand now for our benediction, amen, glory to God, amen, and if you happen to miss the basket on the way in, amen, Amen. The Lord laying on your heart to sow a seed into this ministry. Amen. Uh, when you exit, you can give of your gifts. Amen. Let's look unto the hills which come at thy help. Our help cometh from the Lord who created heaven and earth. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and present you faultless before his presence with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be both glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forever. May we all say, Amen. Amen. Be seated, please. Amen.